Greetings everyone and welcome to the final installment to the introduction of audio amplifier classes. Today we're going to talk about class G and class H amplifiers, what they're all about, how they work, and this is where some more confusion comes in. Class G and H terms can be reversed. Some people call a class G amplifier a class H and some call a class H a class G. Isn't that wonderful? Don't you just love standards? But I'm going to consider Class G the way Bob Cordell in his audio amplifier design book describes it. And I think uh, Japanese engineers describe it this way as well. So Class G and Class H are just another way to make an audio amplifier perform more efficiently. And these were more common before Class D came along because Class D is overall more efficient than even class G and H. But the problem with class AB amplifiers with higher powers is they just dissipate so much heat. If you need an amplifier over 100 watts, say you need a uh, 500 watt amplifier for a PA use or whatever, well the amplifier itself has to dissipate an additional amount of heat on top of that, another 35% or so additional heat. So you're adding on another, say, a couple hundred watts of power dissipation and that, you know, with higher power amplifiers that gets unacceptable. So they needed a way to improve the efficiency of amplifiers and reduce the heat. So enter class G. This amplifier works on the principle of stacked output stages. So you have your regular class AB output stage, but you stack on another output device with a higher supply rail. And you have commutation circuitry here that turns on the higher rail components when they are needed. So let's say you have a signal coming out of the amplifier and it's not reaching beyond this rail voltage. So what I'm showing here is the low rail positive and low rail negative, and then we have the high rail positive and high rail negative voltage. So if the signal can swing within the low rail voltage range, we don't need the high rail, so it's kept turned off. So let's say the signal increases and goes beyond what the low rail can supply. You can see here, if we didn't go beyond that, it would clip. So what happens, the commutation circuitry turns on this transistor and it conducts the peak of that waveform until it gets below that low rail level. And the same is true on the negative side of the amplifier when the signal goes beyond the capability of the low supply here, the high rail will turn on and allow this transistor to conduct the peak of that signal. So what's the efficiency of class G? Well, it actually depends on the signal voltage. At maximum output, which would be all the way up to these rails, it's pretty much the same as a regular class AB amplifier. But at lower signal levels, there's not that huge voltage drop all the way from the high rail to whatever the voltage is on the signal here. You won't have that wasted as dissipation in the transistors. So with this amplifier only with this much voltage, when it's within the lower rail, it's not going to dissipate quite as much as you can see here. Another benefit is spreads the dissipation across more transistors, so it broadens your safe operating area of those transistors. So since music is primarily going to be at a lower level, the amplifier will run much cooler than a standard class AB amplifier that only has the high rails. So if you wanted just a class AB amplifier of the same output power, it would always have to have the high rails at the same voltage level as this amplifier, and it's going to dissipate a lot more heat into these transistors, in which case they would have to parallel them, but still you're wasting much more heat with your normal program material. So again, the advantages are higher efficiency. Let's move that. Disadvantages, it's more complex. And there is 
And these types of amplifiers will have more distortion than a good class AB amplifier because there's issues with the commutation. You, know, you are switching in an additional transistor and something called the early effect. You're changing the voltage seen by these low rail output transistors. So these were more commonly used in PA type amplifiers before class D took over. One extreme example of class G was Bob Carver's amplifiers. He took this a step further and added even a third rail and even went beyond that and added regulation to his power supplies. So that would minimize dissipation even more. And if you watch my videos, I was repairing one of those Carver M400 amplifiers. And I have a M400T amplifier where on one of the channels, the highest rail, like I said, it has three rails on each side. The highest rail is not turning on and it flat tops that waveform when you try to maximize the output. So I have to get back fixing that thing when I want to get to tearing that thing apart again. They are kind of hard to tear apart. But anyhow, that's it for class G. Let's take a look at class H. Now we enter class H, the final amplifier class I'm going to discuss in my little video series here. And it is quite a bit like class G. We'll have two rails, but its operation is a bit different. Now with this smaller signal that operates within the lower rails, it acts like a normal class AB amplifier. But when the signal needs to go beyond the lower rail, there's commutation circuitry that switches in a higher voltage supply. And now that signal can swing up higher without clipping. And of course, the same for the negative side of the circuit as well. So the commutation circuitry detects when it's approaching the limits of the lower rail and switches the supply high. So this is actually the supply voltage. It's at a lower level, then it switches high. And when the signal's coming below the low rail, it'll switch back down to the lower rail voltage. Again, same on the negative side. So just as with the class G, when the signal can work within the confines of the lower supply rails, there's a lower voltage drop across the transistors and it dissipates less heat. So you can have a higher power amplifier and not dissipate nearly as much heat with normal program material. If you watched my video, I was examining a Carver car stereo amplifier that used the class H principle and I scoped one of the supply rails and you can see with one channel, I had the signal. In the other channel, I had the supply rail. And you can see this very thing. It was at the low voltage. And when that signal approached, it switched high. And the signal went over and then came back down. And it switched back to the lower rail. So you actually saw the amplifier doing its business there. So like I said, with the Class G, its advantage is higher efficiency. Its disadvantage It's more complex. I don't think I actually mentioned that I forgot to but oh well and with this type of circuit there's you know when you're suddenly switching in a higher voltage there's commutation noise that can be present and distortion when you suddenly switch in a higher voltage on the collector of the transistor you can have what's known as the early effect which affects the gain of the transistor which means distortion a lot of that's corrected through negative feedback but it works well enough, though you're not going to get low distortion levels like you can with a Class AB amplifier. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the introduction of audio amplifier classes. Hopefully it was somewhat entertaining and educational. Plan to get back to some more projects. Hope to catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.